we're trying to figure out if dung beetles are around in Oklahoma pastures. The kind of pastures that we want to look at are improved pastures versus native pastures. We have a lot of producers that have both of those types of pastures and our sampling plan is fairly simple. We just put cups with uh, dung in it and the particular dung that dung beetles really like is pig dung. So we'll put a little cup of pig dung in and then we put some soapy water into uh, a one liter cup and, uh, and as the dung beetles are attracted to it, they fall into that uh, soapy water and they can't get out. Uh, we actually uh, want to see the difference uh, here, like we have a lot of pastures and, and different treatments. So we're trying to see if there's any uh, difference in the community of dung beetles. And here we have five different species. The big one and I think the most beautiful one. <laughs> Yes, they are beautiful and cute too. Look at this, it's like a jewel. <laughs> dung beetles are very important. They're what we call an ecosystem service provider. They're, they're going to take that dung from that cow and incorporate it back into the soil. They also can uh, reduce parasites, both external parasites such as horn flies and internal parasites. Dung beetles are just a small part of a larger project that uh, we're, we're doing many things on, but mainly looking at fly control. And what we're trying to figure out is if we can look at these and see if consumption rate of the mineral as well as in different types of pasture can affect uh, fly loads on those animals. Well, our number one external parasite for beef cattle across the U.S. is considered horn flies. Uh, horn flies are small flies on the back and on the side of your animals. Uh, July and August are usually our critical months for Oklahoma cattle producers. So we will have a lot of those flies. And if you just want to consider the impact of horn flies to either a stalker system or a cow-calf system, it's the impact to weight performance. And so essentially how we measure that, we, we can measure weaning weights or in weights and stalkers, and then uh, relate that back to fly treatment and fly load. Usually our fly loads are what we consider economic when it's above 200 and we get well over above 200 horn flies per animal in, in April. Research is one of the, the focal points of what we try to do and uh, to, in the way we do it is try to make it very applied so we can take it back to producers and share that with them. <laughs>